Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and in today's video, we're going to be doing some exploratory data analysis on a real COVID data set. And in between, I'll also cover some theories and fundamentals of EDA techniques, which is going to be very useful for you to apply to any data set that you encounter. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back to our studio. In this exploratory data analysis session, we'll be using a few libraries, uh, namely data.table, fun modeling and ASMIS. And for this tutorial, I found a nice COVID data set on Kaggle. I already downloaded this data set into my uh, project folder. If you don't know yet what our project is and why we should use it and how we can create our project in our studio, check out my earlier video where I talked about it in depth. Now let's load those libraries and uh, also read in our data set. Um, normally you would have read.csv function for reading in csv file however in their table you just need to um, to use fread which is an, a very fast function for reading in a uh, csv file the first thing you might want to do uh, when you have a new data set is to view the data set to see what it looks like and what kind of information that is uh, included in this data set you can see that in this data set we have uh, ISO code, I guess this is probably the code of the country, um, the continent, location, uh, which is the country itself, and the date. And we can see that there, there's a whole bunch of information here about COVID. And uh, so we have total case, new case, uh, death per million, and a lot of information about hospitalization. And interestingly, we also have the information on vaccinations, which is quite interesting, and also demographic information here. So this data set has a lot of information. So yeah, um, depending on what we are interested in, uh, we will probably narrow down our scope of analysis. You might be asking, well, what is actually exploratory data analysis? EDA simply means to explore and understand the main characteristics of the data set. There are two main types of EDA, univariate analysis and multivariate analysis. Univariate analysis means to look at a single feature in the data at a time. Examples of this are checking the data types of the columns in a data set, for example, to see if they are numerical or categorical, um, checking the outliers in the data set, Another important thing to look into is the number of zeros and missing values. Another important technique in univariate analysis is to look at the distribution of the feature. All of this is often referred to as data profiling. You can perform these analysis either graphically with the help of plots and charts and graphs, etc., or non-graphically, which is just to look at the numbers numerically. In this tutorial, we start with the simplest analysis type, which is univariate analysis, which is about understanding individual features in the data. Now, the first thing you might want to do is to look at the dimension of the data and the column names. Uh, you can see that we have um, almost a 100,000 rows uh, and we only have 60 columns. And in the fun modeling library, uh, there's a very nice function called DF status, which help us kind of do the basic profiling on the data set. So you can see that this function gives us some uh, insights or some basic information of each of these variables in our data set. So firstly, we have the number of zeros, percentage of zeros, um, number of NA values, uh, which is missing values and percentage, also infinitive values, um, and the data type um, for each of the columns. And lastly, we have the number of unique values um, in each variable. So this kind of basic information on, on the variables is really useful for us to decide what kind of things that we uh, we want to do on, on these variables. And is there any things that we need to pay attention to or uh, do some more transformation to be able to utilize those variables? Using these out-of-the-box functions from these packages is, is quite handy because otherwise, if for example, if you have to calculate the percentage of NA values, uh, for all the variables in the set yourself, you probably have to uh, to do something like um, like this. Uh, so in data table, we have um, we can do the l apply function, which is applying a function on all the columns in the data set, and then we have to calculate um, the total of the number of NA values in the column divided by 
um, the number of row in the data set, so the total number of rows, um, something like this. Then you can see that we get the same information or the same values that we get for uh, the percentage of NA values here. However, this is a lot more coding and probably if you're not used to it, it probably takes more time. So for quick analysis, I think using these out of the box libraries and functions are comes in really handy. The next thing we might want to know is the distribution of these variables. Again, we have a very nice profiling function from the fun modeling package uh, called uh, FREC for categorical variable. Let's try to run it. It will give us all the categorical variables that exist in the data set. Um, and it also gives us some nice plots on the distribution of those variables. Now let's take a look at them. We're going to see that half of the time um, we don't have information on this variable. And if we do have information, then uh, the test to perform is, well, is the most common test unit in this data set. Now we have another plot on the distribution of the continents. In the console, you can also see the same information uh, that are printed out here, but in a numerical format instead of a graphical format. And a lot of time, a graphical format is easier to look at, and it also makes it easier to identify patterns. Um, and yeah, that's why it's really handy. For profiling numerical variables, we also have two approaches, um, so graphical or non-graphical. Let's first um, go with the graphical. Now, uh, we can use a plot num uh, function in the fun modeling package. Now, let's try to run this function. I'm not sure if it's going to work because there are way too many numerical variables in this data set, but let's see what comes out. Oh, there's something. Well, this is pretty a bad idea because there are so many variables and things become really small. But yeah, you can see some stuff here. So from these plots, you can see, for example, if you compare the female smokers with the male smokers distribution, we can see that much more male are actually smokers because we can see here the most common values are around between 20 to 40% for males. However, for females, uh, we can see that uh, most of the values are below 10%. So this kind of frequency plot gives us a nice overview of how the how the data is actually distributed. You could also choose to look at this distribution quantitatively. The way to do that is to use the function uh, profiling num. Um, this is a very nice function that um, uh, that's going to print out all the uh, basic statistics of, um, of um, all the columns in a data set. Well, I have learned that I have way too many columns, so I'm going to just um, select a few of them. So um, we saw earlier that we have male smokers, uh, which we saw some, some quite interesting stuff there. So um, I'm gonna, just going to try it out. Well, we can also maybe view this. So you can see that we have two variables here with a few different statistics. So we have mean, standard deviation, percentile, uh, skillness, um, and some of them here are probably not too familiar, but um, basically variation coefficient signify the presence of outliers. So if um, if there are a lot of outliers, this coefficient will be uh, larger. Skewness uh, signifies how skewed um, this distribution is. And we saw earlier female smokers uh, distribution is much more uh, skewed towards, um, towards zero. And I think that's why we have a larger number here for the skewness of the female smokers uh, feature. And then we also have kurtosis, which measures um, whether the data is heavy-tailed or light-tailed compared to a normal distribution. If the data is heavy-tailed, it indicates that the data is probably having more um, outliers because the, the tails are, um, are heavy and like fat tails. And next, we also have interquantile range, which measures how spread out the data are. Now, the last two measures indicate where most values are. So, uh, for example, range 98 
percent indicates that um, 98 percent of the values fall between this uh, between these two um, values in the next step of our analysis we want to narrow down our analysis scope because there's a lot of information in this data set because i'm living in the netherlands i'm most interested in the statistics in, for the netherlands and now i think i want to see the vaccination status of the netherlands so i would select only columns that are about vaccination so let's see what are the columns in the data set sorry i'm mixing it with python um yeah oh i see here the total vaccinations per 100 uh yeah this is quite interesting so i will i will select only those columns i so go uh, we have the location um then we have the date because I also want to see the development over time of the um, the vaccination. So I still include the date columns here. Um, then we have the total vaccination. People fully vaccinated. Okay, this is much smaller and we have the um, two interesting columns here. However, we also see that there are a lot of NA values. Well, that makes sense because we didn't have the vaccination before, probably before June or so. So what we want to do is to remove the NA values um, in these those columns. Is an A um, total vaccination. Or another way you can also do is to uh, do um, complete case uh, total vaccine uh, okay something like this it can also work um, now let's try visualize this data set or the vaccination rate for this exercise I'll be using ggplot I think I forgot to even load this library yeah um, so let's do that we would have um, ggplot uh, data is e equal to nl then we have the aesthetic uh, which is the x and y axis um, the, on the x axis we would want to have um, the date column and on the y axis we want to have um, people vaccinated per 100 we'll be using geom line which is for the line chart and then we'll start specifying some uh, visual elements of this chart uh, we have the scale y uh, continuous because this is um, a continuous variable the vaccination rate um, and we yeah for now we just specifying some of the breaks for the y axis I expect that it's probably uh, between somewhere um, 40 or 60 percent so I'm doing the breaks like this and then we would have labels equals scales and now for the labs which is for um, specifying some things like titles uh, we can have titles like percentage of um, vaccinated people in the netherlands uh, oh yeah netherlands and then we have okay we can also specify the x-axis and the y-axis now the x-axis is of course date uh, the y-axis is a percentage of uh, vaccinated people now let's try to run this and I hope that there's no error. I do see here is a typo scale. Yes, it works. And here you can see that when we zoom in, this is the vaccination rate in the Netherlands in the past few months. So between February and July, uh, we can see that the vaccination rate increased a lot uh, if we look at this graph which is a, a very good sign now i want to compare the netherlands with other countries in the world to see how how does it perform compared to some other countries now for this we can also try to plot uh, several lines on this graph so um 
For example, if we choose the location uh, is equal to well in so Netherlands or it can be uh, UK, it can be uh, also France and we also have to make sure that we excluded the uh, the NA values or not NA. So this is the uh, Then if we run this, I expected three countries, but I think this is probably United Kingdom. Yeah, this looks interesting. Well, we see here that the Netherlands um, has roughly the same vaccination rate as France. However, the UK is doing a much better job in vaccinating people. Almost 70% of the population has been vaccinated. And this is kind of what we also heard in the news, so it's really nice to observe this in the data itself. Congratulations, you complete the first lesson and probably the most important lesson in exploratory data analysis, which is about data profiling. In the coming lessons, we start looking into a variety of data transformation techniques and further down the road, we're going to start looking into multivariate analysis, where we start looking into more complex and also very useful techniques like uh, correlation matrices and clustering analysis etc. If you want to check out the code that I used in this video, you can find the download link in the description below. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!